So all set should we start sir yes sir okay give me one give me one minute please Just yes sir minute. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening episode of Pursue. This is Pursue 20A, which is hematology transfusion medicine. We are streaming live from Ames Jodhpur via Kolkata. A very important, very essential, and very basic topic of which many of us have not much knowledge, which is blood group system, basic and advanced. And to speak on that, we have somebody who's an expert in this. We have Dr. Anubhav Gupta who's an MBBS and MD in transfusion medicine from the famous PGI Chandigarh. He's also done a PGD HHM. Presently, he's an assistant professor in the Department of Transfusion Medicine at Ames Jodhpur. To his credit, he's got multiple publications in national and international journals. His areas of interest is apheresis, immunohematology, cryopreservation of stem cells, stem cell harvesting, artificial intelligence in transfusion medicine, he has been awarded the Harold Gunson Fellowship at the ISBT at the ISBT 2021. Before I ask Dr. Gupta to start, let me request all of you to keep your mic muted, your camera off, and please don't share your screen. With this, but let me request Dr. Anubhav Gupta, sir, please share your screen. Let's start. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nadeem, sir. It will be my pleasure to be a part of PERS through Nadeem, sir. Thank you, sir. Nadeem sir, my screen is visible sir. Yes sir, please share your PPT, that's it. Okay, good evening friends. So, uh, I will be talking about the blood group system, the basics and advances. So basically it is a very broad topic. So I, I'm just covering the nomenclature and ABO and H blood group system. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Neelam ma'am, uh, who was uh, my ex uh, Head of the department, Department of Transfer Medicine, PGI Chandigarh, and Dr. Ritiram Sharma, who is uh, the present head of the department, Department of Transfer Medicine, PGI Chandigarh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So, I will be discussing the topics under the following headings: the uh, starting with the introduction, then blood group nomenclature, the importance of antigen study, the terminology, the genetics, ABU and RH genetics, the ABU blood group system, H blood group system, and uh, ending the seminar with the uh, nutshell in nutshell so basically what is a blood group system so blood group system consists of a group of antigens so we should have a group of antigens to call it as a blood group system but not only the presence of a group of antigens made a blood group system it should be the antigens should be encoded by a alleles at a single gene locus and which are so closely tightly packed that the crossing over is not possible so for any antigen to be a part of a blood group system it should have a group of antigens which should be coded by by the alleles at a single gene or the gene should be so tightly packed that the crossing over doesn't occur then 
some antigens may be uh, doesn't fit in a system so they can be fitted in a series which are known as antigen series they can be clubbed under the collection so what is an antigen collection so antigen collection consists of the antigens that are phenotypically biochemically and genetically related but the genes coding them has not been identified so the basic difference between the system and a collection is that in the system the gene is identified and there is a single gene which is so closely tied that the crossing over doesn't occur but in the collection the gene hasn't or has not been identified then comes the series so series is just the antigens which cannot be fitted in the system and the collection they are comes under the series i will be talking about in my further slides so the placement of a blood group antigen into a system or a collection begins with a discovery with an antibody so with any of the antigen which should be fitted for a system or for an uh, for a collection or for a series the discovery begins with an antibody so first of all an antibody has to be discovered before being worked up or clubbed uh, uh, identifying into an uh, gene or clubbing them into the system or the collection so then if we have already talked about the system we have talked about the series we have talked about the collection so what is blood group what is blood uh, what is blood group so basically the blood groups are the red cell antigens they are nothing but they are the antigens on the outer surface which are recognized by the immune system of an individual who lacked that particular structure that means if my blood group is a it means that i am harboring the a antigen on my rbc membrane and my if my rbc membrane is harboring the a antigen i am i will be uh, missing the corresponding antibody the corresponding antibody is anti a but i will be having the supplementary antibody that is anti b so the antigens can be classified as proteins they can be carbohydrates and again carbohydrates can be glycoproteins and they can be glycolipids and uh, the corresponding antigens if we have uh, we have talked about the ant uh, antigens which can be proteins and carbohydrates the corresponding antibodies can be natural occurring or can be immuno aluminized natural occurring antibodies just like we are having anti a anti b but we are not having anti d so anti a and anti b are natural occurring antibodies but anti d is by the iso immunization or by the aluminization that we will form the the allo antibody only after the sensitization suppose like uh, the taking the example of hdfn ki the uh, baby is having aluminized from the mother the baby is not harboring that antigen uh, sorry the baby is harboring that antigen and mother is not harboring the d antigen mother is form anti d and it will be cross over to the placenta then come to the baby so baby is having the aluminization from the mother then uh, the what are the guidelines for establishment of a new blood group system so for an antigen to form a new blood group system it must be defined by a human allo antibody second it should be encoded by a gene and the gene should be identified and it should be sequenced thirdly the chromosomal location should be known fourthly the gene must be different from and not a closely linked homologous of all other genes encoding antigens of the existing blood group system i will take the example of abo blood group system which is the first blood group system so we already know that uh, 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 if we are classifying the abo antigens under a abo blood group system so we have anti a anti b anti ab so we have a well defined human antibody the genes we are already encoded uh, the chromosome location is already known it is the chromosome number 9 location is 9q 34.3 the gene is different the a gene is uh, different from the b gene but they are so closely homologous but the crossover doesn't take place so for a blood group system the four essential requisites are you should have antibody you should have a gene which should be identified which should be uh, sequenced the chromosome location should be known and fourthly the gene must be different from the other gene and it should be so closely homologous that a crossover doesn't take place 
coming to the basics uh, and coming to the history the human computer systems were first discovered in 1900s and the first uh, blood group system was discovered by the lenister uh, we already know about it but after 80 years that is in 1980s the isbt established a working party on red cell immunogenetics and the blood group terminology to establish a genetically based nomenclature that is both i and machine readable and it is internationally accepted so we all know whether it is pakistan whether it is ukraine whether it is russia what is it usa what is it india what is it is a uh, city we already we all know that the isbt nomenclature is acceptable to every place to every state to every nation so it is internationally accepted nomenclature which is again automated that is it is machine read machine readable and it is i readable to the slides through the golden tubes and etc the blood group systems has been incorporated into 43 systems so i want to just tell you ki it is a blood group system uh, discovery is uh, uh, ongoing you can't say ki at the present time today is uh, f- uh, 4th march 2022 so till now i have searched on isbd site that today 43 systems are available but might be tomorrow or day after tomorrow might be one blood group system may be added to the existing so there are at present there are 43 systems there are seven collections and there are two series and series are again divided into two that is low incidence antigens and the high incidence antigens so i have already told you ki what is the system i have told you what is the collection collection is that uh, is a part uh, forms a group or a bunch of antigens which has uh, for which the genes has not been identified and the series were those which were not a part of a system which were not a part of the collection but they can be divided into a low incidence or can be high incidence so one may ask me ki sir what is the importance of studying the blood group and antigens so without no, having a thorough knowledge of blood group antigens we can't study transfusion medicine we can't transfuse a blood we can't do a transplant so i uh, i will tell you one thing ki uh, even a blood transfusion is a mini transplant why because we are transfusing or we are transplant we are transplanting these cells we are trans we are transfusing red cells getting my point so it is a it is very much important to have the basic and advanced knowledge of blood group and, and antigens and the importance lies in the allogeneic blood transfusion so if my blood group is b positive i will be transfused with the b positive blood group only you can't transfuse a positive to me because it will cause immunity transfusion reaction i may be killed i may be murdered so the basic knowledge is for the allogeneic blood transfusion which i am saying it is a mini transplant then the uh, and the erythrocytes which have to be tied for the various antigens why because erythrocytes or rbcs carry an antigen which lack in the recipient if i am the recipient i should lack that antigen if i am not lacking that antigen and somebody is having that antibody it will be cross react it will be incompatible for you for me and it will elicit an immune response and it could lead to antibody formation and i may die it can lead to str immunity transfusion reaction it can cause hemolytic disease of new one hdn the study of uh, blood group system is very much important for organ transplantation whether it is uh, renal transplant whether it is liver transplant whether it is heart transplant abo antigen are very much important though hla are more important for renal transplant it is less than uh, important for liver transplant but without abo compatible liver uh, but uh, without abo matching no transplant can take place though we may decrease the titer there are exceptions for the renal transplant but the prognosis is always good when we have matched the abo antigen between the donor and the recipient then the use of uh, blood group antigen study lies in the genetics in the forensics and the anthropodic in investigations due to its straight forward inheritance from the mother to father and to his son and a easy detection that the prediction of inheritance of diseases which are encoded by the genes in close proximity to the gene encoding the blood group system that is um, i may say there is a uh, phenotype known as acquired d 
aquat b is very closely linked with the gastric cancer with the pancreatic cancer with the gid diseases there are uh, kid blood group system there are uh, i may say uh, duffy blood group system uh, you already know that it is linked with the malaria many blood group system has been linked with a sickle cell disease many blood group systems like kid and duffy are linked with the urea transporter in fact uh, in older days urea trans for uh, um, uh, for the detection of uh, urea uh, receptor these antigens were typed because if you have a null phenotype of these antigens the cell will be uh, so resistant to the hemolysis that it will not lyse so in direct so these blood group systems or the identification of these blood group antigens added to the advantage that you may diagnose the disease and lastly it may contribute to understanding of cell membrane structure ki how the cell membrane behaves so this is a very beautiful table which tells ki uh, the uh, blood group systems and the association with the red cell function for example rh blood group system kid blood group system kx kx is about the cal blood group system having the kx antigen the dico the cotton the gil the agustins blood group system the lanister blood group system rh and uh, blood group system then these act as a membrane transporters some blood group uh, antigens act as bound antigens mns blood group system and well antigen system act as a structural proteins duffy act as a cytokine receptor luthran xg indiana siana they act as a set as it is uh, cell adhesion molecules cromer nox act as a complement regulatory you have heard about the pnh cd59 cd55 which are the markers so these blood group systems are directly linked with the pnh with the complement regulation then we are talking about the aboh which we are talking about which contribute to the uh, integrity of the cell membrane for the glycoclicks in coming to the terminology so the terminology for blood group antigens has been devised by the isbt which is the international society for blood transfusion this is the biggest society so this society assigns uh, a terminology in 1980s and which uh, is carried till date so it says ki uh, it identifies uh, or it assigns a six digit number to each antigen that for example if you are having a t antigen it will have a six digit number the first three digit will represent the blood group system for example if we are talking about rh blood group system so rh blood group system number is 4 so we have to write 004 004 is for the rh system and the last three digits represents the antigen specificity like rh blood group system has 55 and antigens and among the 55 antigens we are talking about d antigen so d antigen is 001 d antigen is the first antigen in the rh blood group system so rh code is 004 and 001 stands for d antigen so for the d antigen as per the isbt number we will write 004 001 or alternatively the system symbol followed by the antigen number may be used like rh 001 or more usually rh1 we may just remove the zero so we may write so but the standard practice is 004 001 so in routine practice we may say it is rh 001 or rh1 which will denote the d antigen so how does we will tell what is the phenotype or how will we represent a phenotype so the phenotypes are represented by the system symbols followed by a colon followed by a list of antigens separated by the commas those antigens shown to be absent are preceded by a minus sign taking an example cal antigen cal blood group system so we will write this what is the symbol of the cal blood group system it is k e l cal minus 1 here denotes the absence of first antigen comma then it comes the 2 2 means it is plus 2 it means the first antigen is absent but the second antigen is present it is followed by the minus 3 minus 3 is that third antigen is absent but the fourth antigen is present so it tells about the phenotype so what are the genes implicated in the system so genes are designated by a asterisk sign followed by the antigen number 
which are all italics so for writing a cal anti uh, cal, uh, cal genes you have to write the uh, cal in italics followed by the asterisk sign followed by the three so gene is three it is a third gene how you write a genotypes so genotypes have the system symbol followed by the s tree followed by the alleles or haplotypes separated by a slash and which are again all italics for example cal cal is the symbol for cal blood group system which is followed by an asterisk sign which is again followed by a two two is the num the allelic num ye number then we will follow by it is again followed by the three slash two three slash two is the haplotype then it is the four four is the allele so the genotype is uh, it is all italics so the genotype is k e l k l asterisk sign two comma three by two two is the G allele three by two is the haplotype comma four so the gene uh phenotype and genotypes they are all nomenclature by the isbt and it is an standard practice we can't uh, remove the italics we can't put plus minus by ourselves it is all it's standardized and it is well accepted all over the world antigen phenotype gene and genotype designations for the collections are constructed in the same way for the collections Uh, the antigens are, re are represented in the same way, but it is somewhat different for the series. For the series, we add seven hundred and nine and nine zero one. Like um, for the seven zero zero seven hundred, it is it represents in the low frequency antigens, and nine zero one represents the high frequency antigens. So whenever we write the series or the antigens in the series, we will remove the symbol of that blood group. we will add 700 for the low frequency and 901 series for the high frequency then what are the absolute numbers so suppose uh, uh, if you will read uh, transfer medicine older books you will uh, you can easily see that there were about 60 antigens in the R rh blood group system but at present there are only 55 because many blood groups antigens were either absolute or they were clubbed with together known as the compound antigens so once a number has been allocated to a specific or to a specialty that number cannot be subsequently used for another specialty suppose if you have given 5 to x you can't and it has been absolute so in future you will never give that number 5 uh, to any other antigen consequently if the number of a specialty becomes inappropriate then the number becomes absolute so in simple language कि इफ यू हैव गिवन ए नंबर टू एनी एंटीजन एट एनी टाइम इन एंड इट हैज बीन ऑब्सोल्यूट और यू फाउंड आईएसबीटी फाउंड्स दैट द जीन व्हिच वाज आइडेंटिफाइड फॉर्म्स ए सीरीज और इट फॉर्म्स ए कलेक्शन और इट डजंट रिकॉग्नाइज और इट डजंट आई कैन से इट डजंट रिप्रेजेंट्स दैट एंटीजन और इट हैज बीन an heterogeneous in in form then we will remove that gene but the number of that specific antigen is is absolute but will never be used for any other antigen so uh, till yesterday there were 43 antigen uh, 43 blood group systems identified so the first blood group system was abo blood group system which has uh, i may use i may not use uh, my cursor here so the first blood group system is abo blood group system the system symbol used is abo the gene name is abo you can see which here has been written in which has been written in italics the number of antigens has been identified as 4 the chromosomal number is 9q 34.3 the cd number has not been yet established so uh, and likewise rh blood group system has been given the number of 4004 which i have discussed previously the system system symbol was rh gene name was rhd or rhcc depending on the antigen for which the gene has been coding the number of antigens are 655 till date 
previously they were 60 plus or 65 plus but they have been clubbed or they have been absolute so the number cannot be used for another antigen but total number is 55 chromosomal number uh, location is one chromosomal location is one followed by the p 36.11 cd number is cd 240 so uh, and bombay group which we always talk is uh, uh, is represented by the blood group system number 18018 system name is h it has system symbol of h gene code is fut1 number of antigen is only one the chromosomal location is 19c cd number is 173 so just appreciate that the blood group system may have 50 antigens it may have 55 antigens it may have only one antigen so basically it forms a system so a system can have a one antigen it can have thousands of antigens this can have two antigens it can have 55 antigens so it depends upon the identification and sequencing of the gene for that antigen so the criteria for an inclusion of a new specialty till now we were talking about the uh, antigen which is new for that system but if a system has already been established like uh, i will uh, have an example of indian group indian blood group system indian blood group, blood group system is 23 it has six antigens and it scores by the uh, chromosome location at 11q so previously it has only five antigens but in 2017 dr sanmuk joshi from india from gujarat identified a new antigen and it has been like uh, and it has been named inra indra so it has been added to the indian blood group system and previously it was five antigens and with the inra it forms six antigens now it is five plus one it is six so how we incorporate that sixth antigen in that blood group system so for the identity for inclusion of the new specialty the all antigens awarded by the isbt number must have been shown to be inherited and should have at least one of the following four criteria first it should have a antithical relationship antithical relationship that it means that uh, an antigen gene should be present and its homologous should be present on the another antigen for example for uh, the indian blood group system we have ina and inb so in stands for indian blood group system a for the one gene and b for the other gene so ina is homologous or it can be heterologous it is but it is antithetical relationship so uh, and secondly it should have the demonstration that the expression of the antigen is associated with the variation in the nucleotide sequence so first of all it should have a antithetical relationship secondly it should have a nucleotide sequence a variation in a uh, nucleotide sequence if the if there is no variation then it may uh, if there is no variation in the uh, nucleotide sequence of INB, it will be coded as INA. So there should be a variation in the nucleotide sequence. Thirdly, there should be evidence from the linkage analysis of the family data that the controlling allele is probably a newly recognized. So the INRA, which have which was identified in 2000 in 2017, it, it has a controlling allele which was INR. Uh, which was uh, which was identified as, as INRA. It was closely resembling with the INA and INB, but it has a antithetical relationship. It has a variation in the nucleotide sequence, and it again has a uh, located at a gene which is uh, and coding for an antigen which was protein or which was glycoprotein, but which was absent with the others. I will make it seem simple that there is at, that at present there are six antigens INA, INB, 1, 3, 4, 5 and INRA. Uh, so this INRA to be a part of the existing Indian blood group system, it should have an antithetical relationship with other antigens. IN should INRA should have an antithetical relationship with INA or INB. 
it should have a variation in the nucleotide sequence of the gene thirdly the controlling allele should be newly recognized if the controlling g allele is not newly recognized then you can't assign that newly assigned antigen to the existing blood group system why because for the uh, as per the definition of the system you should have a and a gene or allele identified if suppose you are not having an, an allele or gene identified for that system and you can still keep that antigen in series or in collection but does that doesn't be clubbed under the system getting my point so what are the collections so collections were introduced in 1988 in 1980 the isbt defines the system in 88 the collection terms was coined it brings together the genetically biochemically and serologically related set of antigens which were but for which the gene identity was not known so till present there were 13 collections which were 205 207 208 209 210 212 213 201 202 203 204 206 211 what are series series are the antigens that doesn't fit into a system or a collection the series can again be identified as 700 series or the 900 series 700 series are the low incidence antigens and the 900 series are the high incidence in, uh, and antigens so for the low incidence series uh, taking the example of cw we have 18 antigens in low incidence series and for the high incidence series like capital e we have about 6 antigens so what are the inclusion criteria for uh, series for the 700 series the incidence should be as low as less than 1% in the most population tested for the for a dist and it should have it distinct from other numbered low incidence antigens of 700 series as well as those of the blood group systems and collections that the number should be different that it should demonstrate a inheritance so in nutshell how will you count a antigen in a 700 series for clubbing or for putting an antigen in a low incidence series known as 700 series the incidence of that antigen in that population should be less than 1% and it should demonstrate a inheritance from the mother to his son getting my point and from the son to his offspring so at least two generation should express should have that inheritance examples are betty christian bills box many what is what is 901 series 901 series are the antigens which are tested as which are labeled as high frequency antigens example is well vel sid augustian blood group system sorry augustian blood group series not system so these antigens which were uh, which we put in 901 series or in high frequency antigens they should have in this uh, they should have incidence of greater than 90% in that population and demonstration of that antigen is lacking from the red cells of at least two siblings that is you should have a negative phenotype in a genetically de determined population so in 70 series we were having that the two generation should express the inheritance should be club should be uh, should be known but for the 901 series the it is not it is not talking about the generation it is saying ki in a particular generation at least the two siblings of that family should be lacking that antigen then only we can say it is high frequency but it should be again expressing in other antigen in other family members suppose uh, if a uh, mother father is having uh, 10 sons 6 plus 4 uh, daughters 6 sons and 4 daughters so uh, from that 10 siblings at least two should have 
B should be two should be lacking that uh, that antigen and uh, eight siblings should express that specific antigen. Then only we can say it comes under the high frequency antigen. So what is cluster of differentiation? So the cluster of differentiation, which is abbreviated as CD, is a protocol for the identification of cell surface molecules that provide the targets for the phenotyping of cells. So basically, CD, as you already know, ki it is a protocol. It is or it uh, tells the or it identifies the cell surface molecules which are the targets for phenotyping the cells. Ki by like uh, for PNH, which I which I was talking, ki, uh, CD59. It was the marker of. It was the 50, CD55, CD59. These were the marker for complement system, but they are again a marker of some blood group series, some collections, some systems. So the CD molecules act uh, are for the identification of that molecules. The CD molecules may act as a receptors, or they may have a role in the cell signaling, uh, like a cell signal. Like uh, again, I am taking about the, the same example of. Uh, um, uh, complement system is CD 59, 58, uh, 55, which is a marker, which is a receptor for the PNH. It has a role in cell sing, uh, cell signaling for the complement activation. And lastly, the CD molecules carry the blood group antigens, like MN blood group system. So, in the MN blood group system, we have which which again activates the complement uh, the antibody may are about 50 per, uh, 50 percent of the cases it is igm in 50 percent cases it is igg it activates uh, the complement so it carries the antigens so the cd molecules for the mns blood group system may or uh, mns mns has uh, four antigens m n s s so these antigens were identified they are they act as a receptor they act as a singling molecule for the system so coming to the uh, main topic about the what is abo and uh, h blood group system i am taking abo and h blood group system though they are two different identities they belong to two different systems abo is the first blood group system h is the 18th blood group system but I am dealing, um, but I am talking uh, uh, these two blood group systems simultaneously. Why? Because they are very closely related and they have biochemical and phenotypically so closely related that without H blood group system, we can't talk ABO blood group of blood group system. So, Lannister discovered the ABO blood group system in 1901. He and his five other co-workers began mixing each other blood groups and serums and accidentally performed the first forward and reverse blood grouping. So Landister rule, uh, so Landister basically discovered the ABO blood group system and his followers later on discovered the RH blood group system. So Landister rule is that if an antigen is present on a patient red blood cells, the corresponding antibody will not be present in the patient serum under the normal circumstances, uh, circumstances or conditions that means if i am my blood group is a positive i will be having a antigen but i will not be having that antibody i will not have an anti a under normal conditions if i will be having anti a it in it is not normal i mean i will may die why because my anti a will agglutinate with the, my with my a antigen and you may label me as the auto anti a like uh, uh, we have aiha autoimmune hemolytic disease of new uh, sorry uh, autoimmune uh, autoimmune uh, anemias in what happens in autoimmune anemias we have the antigen and we have the antibody to that antigen which agglutinates and uh, lead to the progression of the disease. So, what are the importance of ABO blood group system? So, basically, the importance lies in the two principles. First of all, the ABO blood group system is universal. 
and the antibodies are naturally occurring secondly these antibodies which are naturally occurring are mostly igm and that means ki igm reacts at lower temperature and has a tendency to activate the complement so uh, and one interesting thing is that almost all the normal individuals till the age of 6 uh, months matlab the neonates or the infants till the age of 6 months do have the antigen they have ab antigen but it might not be expressed this is very uh, this line is very uh, is very important which i am telling you because till the age of 6 months if we are typing an uh, infant as a weaker sub group of a for example it is uh, we can't comment ki whether that individual or that uh, if that infant is uh, having the weaker sub group or not why because that uh, these antigens develop till the age of 8 years so uh, the antibody develops maximum after the 6 months of age and the antigens best develop at the age of 8 years so the inheritance pattern so basic definitions the what is isoglutination so isoglutinins are defined as the antibodies that agglutinate the uh, blood cells of some individuals of the same species glycosyl transferases are the enzymes that facilitate the transfer of carbohydrate molecules onto the carbohydrate precursor molecules so isoglutinins are the antibodies agglutinins these are the self antibodies sorry not self ant antibodies they are the uh, isomers of the same species these are antibodies from the same species and that when uh, we are talking about the transferases we are dealing with the we are talking about the enzymes then we have something called as immunodominant su sugar so immunodominant sugars are the sugars which are the which forms the a base one network for the antigenic determinants which we which uh, which will be when combined with the precursor molecules uh, with uh, which uh, which when uh, combined with the uh, precursor molecules will uh, give us the antigens i will tell you in further slides <coughs> so we know what is isoglutinins we know what are the transferases we have the immunodominant sugar so what are the uh, abo genes so basically the abo genes are located on chromosome number 9 we have already known about it the inheritance in the abo system is controlled by the various alleles four common alleles are a1 a2 b and o and a series of rare other alleles like a3 ax am i just want to tell ki uh, i am just talking about like a3 ax am these are the weaker sub groups of a antigen a antigen is like an umbrella if we are if my uh, if my blood group is a it is not purely a it is i may be a1 i may be a2 i may be a3 i may be ax i may be am in 80% of the conditions i may be a1 in the rest 15 to 18% i may be a2 but in lesser proportion i may be a3 i may be ax i may be am i am a positive but i am have a weaker sub group of a so ab blood group system the beauty of that ab blood group system is that it is controlled by the various alleles common one are a1 a2 a1 for 80% of the times it is a1 15 to 18% is a2 and uh, the this 80% and 15 to 20% i'm talking about the a antigen and then it, it comes about the b and o alleles and the rare alleles for that a antigen is a3 axm with a total of 280 alleles in a single abo blood group system with a 537 variant so this is the beauty of the uh, abo blood group system basically so we know what is A, a allele what is b allele what is o allele so basically o allele does not produce any antigenic product it is a recessive and it is recessive to a and b alleles and a and b alleles are co dominant so basically the inheritance of a and b genes is co dominant 
so basically if you are having the a antigen you you may be uh, like in in the last line i am uh, i have typed ki for example ki the phenotype is a1 so it can have the several genotypes you may be a1 a1 you may be a1 a2 you may be a1 a3 you can be a1 ax you can be a1 am or you can be a1 o so a1 is a broad umbrella and under that broad umbrella you are having several phenotypes you can have several genotypes so the uh, this slide tell about the major blood group system abo in which uh, i have depicted the forward blood grouping using the anti sera anti red blood cells in the abo blood group i am having abo ab in the antigens present for the abo blood group a i am having the a antigen and i i will be missing and the antigen will be b but the antibody will be anti b for the b blood group i will be having b antigen present and the anti a present and for the o blood group system or sorry o blood group i am having no antigen present no antigen present means i am having no abo antigen present i may be i may be having antigen of other blood group system on o but i am lacking abu uh, ab antigen or no i may be having m i will be i may be having indian blood group system i may be uh, having d antigen on o but i am lacking a and b on o so the antigen missing are a and b theek hai and the antibody present are anti a and anti b and for the ab blood group we are having a and b both antigen present on the red cells and we are having the Uh, nil or no or none antibody present in the serum so this we are talking about the abo blood group system only out of 43 blood group system i am talking about abo blood group system ki on ab or on o or on b or on a we are having a antigen b antigen ab antigen we might be having other antigens also so please make it clear ki for o and ki for uh, blood group o we may have other blood group antigens present on o cell but it will be absent only for a and b it may be absent uh, for other blood groups antigens it may be present the other blood groups uh, antigens may be present or absent it depends but for to be called o a and b antigen should be absent so if an antigen is present on a patient red cell the corresponding antibody will not be present in the patient plasma under normal conditions i am writing what are, uh, and i have already told you what is normal con normal conditions by giving the example of eiha or to mean hemolytic anemia in eiha you may have the corresponding antigen and the corresponding antibody but under normal con conditions if you are having an antigen you will not have that antibody in your plasma so uh, this is the forward and reverse blood group so in uh, transfusion medicine basically i uh, always say ki transfusion medicine is full of paradox it is full of uh, uh, controls so even for a simple blood group in documenting a simple blood group we use at least four controls so for the forward grouping so what is the for i i uh, i should tell you ki what is working what is the forward grouping so for the forward grouping is when you are mixing the red cells see you have the sample edd sample you centrifuge it separate the red cells and the plasma that red cells will work for the forward grouping and that plasma will work for the reverse grouping on that red cells we have antigens we have a known antigens which will be typed by the known anti sera the known anti sera can be anti a anti b anti d or anti ab so if that unknown uh, antigen to note that unknown antigen we have to uh, we should have the known anti sera for example in this case we have a known uh, we have a known antigen which is present on that red cells we put uh, that red cell in anti a it gives four plus reaction that means that a antigen is present but 
when we put NTB, it is it gives negative reaction. It means that B antigen is B antigen is missing and A antigen is present. So the blood group of that uh, patient or donor is A. NTB tells about the D antigen or NTB tells about basically we are cross checking uh, the A antigen with NTAB. So if A antigen is present. NTAB will give the reaction. If B reaction is per, if B antigen is present, it will give the reaction. But if A and B antigens are not present, NTAB will give negative reaction. But opposite happens in reverse grouping. So in reverse grouping, we are having the plasma, and in the plasma, we are having the antibodies. But these antibodies are unknown. So for that unknown antibodies. We should have the known antigen to be typed. So what we will do? If we will take the plasma from the patient, and we don't don't know ki what antibodies are present, whether it can be anti A, it can be anti B. But we for that we will put that plasma. We will uh, add uh, the, the red cells with the known phenotype with that plasma. And for if that red cells. Which we will call, which are definitely pooled cells. If these pooled cells give the reaction, we can say that that anti that plasma are is having that antibody and reacting with that antigen. For example, just focus on the reverse grouping. That B cells are the known cells, and you are adding the anti sera of the unknown antibody, but it is reacting with the B cell and it is not adding with the A cell. Then you can say that. That patient or donor is having anti B. The patient or donor is not having anti A. It is having anti B, and anti B will be in the uh, in the uh, will present in the serum or in the plasma only when when the patient or donor is A. Now focusing on both. Ki if the blood group is A, antigen is A. So in the reverse grouping, it should. Not the uh, it should be absent for the A antigen and it should give the reaction with the B cell. That is the antigen is A and the antibody is anti B. Anti uh, A antigen is detected in the forward grouping and in the reverse grouping we identified the uh, complementary antibody which is anti B. So A A antigen uh, individual will have anti B antibody. If the uh, if uh, if in the forward grouping you are getting the reaction with the B cell and A cell both, so accordingly this uh, the reverse grouping should uh, should have negative reaction with the A cell and with the B cell. But you should ask sir, you were telling about uh, the uh, controls. What the where we are putting the controls? So in this simple test we have put four controls. The first control is. Forward grouping and reverse grouping. If the forward grouping is not complementary to the reverse grouping, the test is invalid. Suppose in this example, if anti A anti sera is giving four plus reaction in the forward grouping and A cell is positive, that means it is not complementary because as per the Lannister law, if you are having A antigen, you should not have anti A. So the first control is forward grouping with its reverse grouping. The second control is anti A B which you are using. Anti A, uh, sorry, anti A B anti sera should react only when you are having A antigen or B antigen or both. If you are having O blood group, then anti A anti sera and anti B anti sera should be negative, and anti B should again be negative. If Anti A anti sera and and anti B anti sera are negative, but anti A B anti sera is positive. That means your test is invalid, or you are harboring some kind of subgroups. Getting my point? The third control is O cell. O cell means ki you are in in normal conditions. O cell should be negative. Why? Because 
ओसेल हार्बर्स एंटी ए एंड एंटी सॉरी ए एंटीजन और बी एंटीजन सो इफ द ओ एस एल इन सॉरी ओ सेल शुड बी शुड नॉट कैरी ए एंटीजन एंड बी एंटीजन बट इफ योर ओ सेल इज पॉजिटिव डेट मीन्स की एक्सेप्ट ए एंड बी एंटीजन यू आर हाबरिंग एन एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट सम ब्लड ग्रुप सिस्टम गेटिंग माई पॉइंट आई एम टेलिंग यू अगेन की ओ एंटीजन की ओ ग्रुप मीन्स ओ सेल मीन्स यू आर हैविंग नो ए एंड नो बी but you are having but you may be having some other antigens for some other blood group systems so if o cell is positive that means you are ha- harboring an antibody against some other blood group system except a and except b and if it is negative that means you are not harboring a and b antigen but and also the you are not harboring that antigen which you are testing with that antibody i will i am not going to confuse you more ki in normal conditions always remember ki for the o cells under normal conditions it should be negative if it is positive that means either you are having some kind of auto antibody or you are you are having some kind of allo antibody that means allo antibody means that the your patient or your uh, donor might have been transfused or has or uh, and after transfusion or after sensitization he has formed a antibody which is uh, harboring in that uh, with that cell with the o cells and that o cells if we are t- taking that o cells to 37 degree or ag phase it is known as icd or indirect coom test my fourth control is auto control so as per the lenister but what uh, he says ki if you are harboring the a antigen you should not have that antigen so under normal condition auto control should also be negative if your auto control is positive that means you are harboring an antigen and an antibody directed against that antigen so my four controls for a blood grouping is the forward grouping should be complementary with the reverse grouping first second anti ab anti sera should give the complementary results it should give no it should be negative or it should give no results with the o cell or o group individuals but it should give the same strength or same same result when you are type the a antigen oblique or b antigen the o cell should be negative auto control should be negative if o cell is positive that means you are harboring allo antibody or you are harboring auto antibody and for that auto antibody your auto control should be positive so in normal con- conditions o cell should be negative and auto control should be negative and what about ki how we will uh, document the blood group we will write a rsd positive so in this blood group in this report i am depicting the two blood group systems my a denotes the a blood group system which is the first blood group system a is from the first blood group system and rh d means from that 55 antigens from the rh system only d is positive so my whenever my, you say ki your blood group is b positive or a positive is it means that you are telling or you are documenting the two blood group systems first is a blood group system from the abo and rhd blood group system from the rh and from that rh blood group system you are telling that you are harboring only d antigen if it is uh, suppose uh, you are o negative so o negative means you are having o antigen you are harboring o group from the abo blood group system and rh d is negative d antigen is negative from the 55 antigens for that individual so it is o rh d negative so uh, some basics about the antigens so what are antigens antigens can be glycoproteins they can be uh, proteoglycans so some biochemistry for it ki what are the glycoproteins so glycoproteins are the oligosaccharides basically they are the they are the carbohydrates with the proteins 
which are linked to the proteins molecules by like glycoside linkage so they form a linkage so basically the carbohydrate forms a linkage with the proteins okay so uh, uh, it is known as the glycoprotein so what are the proteoglycans so the proteoglycans are the uh, proteins which are co covalently bond with the glycosyl amino glycans gags so whenever the gags are covalently linked with the proteins covalent uh, covalently bond they are known as proteoglycans and what are the gags the gags are the repeating sequencing of the sugar of the disaccharides of an amino um, which are the amino sugars or an unic acid so don't be confused just remember the glycoproteins are the carbohydrates which we, which are linked with the proteins and the proteoglycans are the proteins which are covalently bond with the repeating units of the sugar that's it <coughs> this is the uh, pictorial diagram of glycoproteins because my antigens can be glycoproteins they can be pro, uh, proteoglycans i will be talking uh, in details in my further slides so this uh, pictorial diagram tell about the uh, this is the rbc membrane and my antigens so you can say ki my antigens can have a single pass protein structure can they can have a multiple antigen protein structure like the haywire or they can be put just simply on the rbc membrane for example luis a luis b p1 antigen you can see ki these are on the rbc membrane but few antigens like abh they span around the uh, rbc membrane they form but they are only single pass proteins there are many multi pass proteins also which form a surpass from the uh, rbc membrane that they uh, come out then they again go in to the rbc membrane then they again form ye, ye come out so the difference between these single pass protein multi pass protein or uh, the antigens which are located on the rbc there are these are very important why because some of these antigens form the receptors of some uh, bacteria they can form the receptor of some uh, uh, I, I, i was talking about the urea receptor they can form a receptor for the malaria and ma and many more so how does the antigen form so for the formation of an antigen we are having four types of chains so what are the these chains these chains are type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 we are we are having type 5 also but uh, for this present class i will be telling i will be talking about the type 1 and type 2 chain only type 3 and type 4 chains are morely are uh, more uh, more commonly presented on the renal endothelium type 1 and type 2 are present on the endothelium of every blood cell of, of, of every blood vessel lining so how the type 1 and type 2 differs so the type 1 and type 2 differs by the linkage type 1 linkage is beta 1 3 linkage in uh, uh, let me tell you you can see in this slide ki type 1 is linkage is having a linkage with the galactose gl is the galactose and uh, this uh, an ac is an acetyl galactosamine so the galactose b1 position carbon atom is linked with the third position of the acetyl galactosamine and in type 2 the linkage is b1 to b4 so only the linkage difference is between the type 1 and type 2 this simple linkage difference see the type 1 and type 2 dif uh, difference is only for the linkage only from the 1b linkage to the 3 or 1p b1 linkage to the 4 but this makes a lot of difference why because the type 1 linkage is present in the secretions and type 2 linkage is present on the rbcs 3 and 4 can also be present but type 1 is absent on the rbcs so just by changing the carbon atom position from the 3 to 4 whole scenario change for the type 1 remember it presents in the secretions and type 2 is present on the rbcs so the inheritance of the abo blood group antigens or the blood groups demonstrate that the each individual 
each individual should inherits one abo gene from each parent that i am having i am harboring one gene at least one gene from my each parent one from my father and one from one from my mother and these two genes when club together form the uh, determinants for the antigens which are present on the rbc membrane but remember ki these antigens do code for the antigens does not form the antigens these antigens the sorry these genes which code for the antigens uh, does not form the antigen basically the genes like a gene forms the enzyme which uh, forms the antigen so basically the sequence is the gene which forms the enzyme the enzyme acts on the substrate and forms the antigen so any gene abo gene does not form any antigen it codes for the antigen but it does not form the antigen there are two things separately so the one position or locus <coughs> on each chromosome number 9 is occupied by a uh, gene whether it is o gene that is b gene or it is a gene a single local uh, focus is should be present so how you define a locus so a locus termed h and the final product of that gene at that locus determines the antigen through the enzyme matlab in subsequent slides i am uh, uh, telling you with an example ki matlab see we were talking about the abo system now we are talking about the abo h antigen we are not talking about ab h blood group system why because abo blood group system is different h blood group system is different but they are closely related gene is different every enzyme are different everything's are different but they are very closely related there is abh antigen but there is not abh blood group system so don't be confused but i will uh, like to tell you that the substrate for the a antigen or b antigen or ab antigen is the h antigen only if the h antigen is absent ab o antigen can't be formed if h antigen is present it will form the uh, base for the enzyme to act on the substrate and form the a and b antigen so a b h antigens on the rbc membranes can be glycolipids or they can be glycoproteins it may also occur in the secretions as glycoproteins but the exception but the exception is csf in the csf we doesn't found an end and any antigen so antigens belonging to the abh blood group system are present on rbcs and other blood group cells and body fluids except csf the present of a b and o antigens on uh, or h antigens on the rbc depends on the allelic genes and the ab o or h uh, genetic sequence or the genes harboring from the patient uh, for, 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 uh, from the mother or father an h gene at a separate locus codes for the precursor substance on which the a and b gene products uh, act means ki h gene codes for the enzyme which forms the h substance and on that h substance the uh, a gene codes for the a enzyme and that a enzyme will act on the h product and form the a blood group the product of the a gene and b gene are the enzymes that act as a specific transcription what uh, i was telling you ki the genes are coding for the enzymes and that enzymes are forming the antigens the genes are coding for the enzymes and for the uh, antigens indirectly so genes are coding for the enzymes but the uh, enzyme uh, uh, are coding for the enzymes and for the antigens but that but those antigens are not directly a product of the genes these the, the antigens are the product from the uh, enzymes so h gene so uh, uh, always remember ki h gene products is an enzyme that produces the h substance h gene produces the enzyme 
and that enzyme will act on the uh, precursor substance and form the H substance and on that H substance the product of the A gene or B gene or AB gene will act and form the corresponding uh, enzyme and that corresponding enzyme for example A enzyme, B enzyme, AB enzyme will act on the H substance and form the corresponding blood group. O gene is silent and amorphic. What is amorphic? Amorphic means ki it has lost the ability to form a fruitful or a functional protein or enzyme or, or anything. Malaki, it has lost the ability to function. It has lost, lost the ability to produce a, uh, the fun, the, a, a functioning protein. So, O gene uh, is a silent allele and it does not alter the uh, S substance. Okay. So, coming to the genetics. So, the presence or absence of the ABH antigens on the red blood cell membrane is controlled by the H gene. Secondly, the presence of absence of ABH antigen in secretion is indirectly controlled by the SC gene. Now, what is SC gene? SC gene is the secretory gene. I told you if we are having antigens in every secretion except the CSF. So, for the red cell membrane, which is controlled by the H gene, because if we are not having the H gene, uh, A gene, uh, 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 A gene uh, enzymes, which uh, the enzymes which were coded by the A gene will not act. But if we are having and uh, if we are and uh, and correspondingly, if the S gene is absent, then we may say the the uh, patient or that individual is non secretor or secretor so basically the H gene is coding for the red cells and sc gene is coding for the secretions so uh, for a gene and for a haplotype we are having h h and h is amorphic i told you that it is it is not small h is, is not functioning so basically the capital h small h gene has capital H and small h alleles which are controlling the presence of H, A and B antigen on the RBCs and the secretions. You will tell you uh, but you may ask me yes, sir, you were saying ki, uh, secretions were controlled by the SC gene definitely. RBC because see RBCs are in the close relation with the uh, plasma. So if the secretory gene is present it the antigens the red cells will adsorb that antigens from that plasma okay and it the rbcs will only absorb the antigens from the plasma if it is having the h gene so if we are having the h gene it means uh, the h gene is controlling the h antigen a antigen and b antigen why a antigen b antigen because A group or B group or A antigen and B antigen only be formed when H antigen is present. If H antigen is present, in no, uh, you may have A and B gene, but you will not be able to form A and B um, uh, antigen or blood group. This is the case in uh, Bombay, in which uh, Bombay group is deficient in H gene. You may have A gene, you may have B gene. But you will be not be, but it will not be expressed because the enzymes will not act on the S substance. S substance is lacking. Getting my point. Secondly, what is S E gene? S E gene again has capital S E and small S E. Again, again small S E is amorphic. And at that S E gene controls the presence of antigen in the secretion. So S gene controls the secretions in RBCs. SC genes control the, the uh, sorry H and H gene controls the uh, presence of H, H B, A B antigens on the RBCs and the secretions. SC genes control the presence of H antigen in this secretion and the ABO genes, whether it is A B or O, they control the uh, presence of A B antigens. And each gene should be carried or should be inherited from each parent. 
so how does h antigen form so uh, base uh, so we have a precursor substance precursor substance is galactose b1 uh, towards the fourth uh, carbon atom of the glycosyl and acetyl uh, uh, sorry galactose and acetyl glucosamine and it is linked to the with the one three linkage to the galactose so between the two galactose we are having an acetyl galactosamine so this is the precursor substance on that precursor substance we have the h gene which adds fucose at alpha 1 2 position to the galactose so the fucose is added to the galactose and h substance is formed so in the box i have tell i have told you ki the galactose is linked with the uh, n acetyl glucosamine to the 1 4 linkage which is uh, linked with the 1,3 linkage to the other galactose that is between the two galactose we have an acetyl glucosamine and these when acted upon by the H gene through the transferases the enzyme is and which transferase it is fucosyl transferase that fucosyl transferase acts the fucose sugar to the galactose at the alpha 1 linkage that from the H substance. So H antigen is the foundation for the A and B antigen and the A and G and genes code for the enzymes that add an immunodominant sugar to the H antigen. This means he, uh, uh, in this slide uh, I have told you ki if uh, just see if fucose is adding is added to the galactose through the alpha 1 linkage. Okay? We are having the precursor molecule, galactose and an acetyl glucosamine followed by the galactose and fucose is added at the 1-2 linkage. On that linkage, if uh, an acetyl glucosamine is added to the alpha 1 and 3, it forms the N antigen. Getting my point? If fucose is not there or in other words, if the H substance is not there, that enzymatic product, the enzymatic product is an acetyl D galactosamine is not attached with the galactose. So, if you are harboring the A gene and that A gene is uh, making an, an enzyme, A enzyme or the tra transferase which is coding for the uh, and which is forming the substance an acetyl D galactosamine that end acetyl galactosamine will not be attached to the galactose till you are having or till the fucose is attached with the galactose see uh, same uh, on the same principle ki you are having the h substance and on that h substance the b, b gene product and what is that b gene product is the d galactose for the a we are having an acetyl d galactosamine and for the B, we are having the galactose. For that galactose to be represented as B antigen, it should be attached to the H substance. And H substance is formed by the fucose attaching to the precursor molecule. So, taking I'm sorry to just bother you here. I think we are just crossing the time okay, here. Sir. So how do we go about it should we stop here and then the uh, rest sir, of I will take only 10 minutes if you permit sir okay no problem please go ahead yes sir uh, so i will run through so basically uh, uh, this is the simplest present uh, simplest slide ki we are having the h antigen which is formed by the galactose galactose and an acetyl glucosamine and when the fucose is added we are having the h antigen and on that h antigen if the an acetyl glucosamine is uh, attached it is the a antigen and if it is galactose is, is attached, it is the B antigen. Again, the same thing. So this is again the table showing, uh, just clarifying you, given the fucose is fucose transferase, is the name of the enzyme for the H gene is the fucosyl transferase. For the A gene, it is the N-acetyl galactosamine transferase, which is adding the N-acetyl galactosamine sugar to the S substance. And for the B gene, we are having the galactosamine transferases, which which we uh, which is adding the galactose to the S substance. 
so uh, now comes to the h deficient phenotypes so basically h deficient phenotypes is the bombay blood group system basically so although abo and h systems are two different blood group systems genetically abo which is numbered as 001 and h which is numbered as 018 they are closely related to uh, together at the biological uh, chemical and the phenotypically level the h deficient phenotypes are very rare and include a total deficiency in h antigen which is denoted by the phenotype as capital o and small h so small uh, so oh depicts the phenotype of bombay blood group uh, then we have partial deficiency known as the partial bombay phenotype so the h deficient phenotypes are those rare phenotypes in which the rbcs are completely devoid of h antigens or they have a small amount of h antigen present if it is completely devoid of h antigen it is the bombay phenotype and if it it is partially uh, uh, deprived then it is the para bombay so basically what is the uh, basically the phenotype of bombay or o is same but serologically it different phenotypically it is same serologically it is different genotypically it is different so in routine if you are just doing the formal team if you phenotype you will get the o for the o group and o for the bombay group but the importance lies in the identification of the bombay group by doing the reverse grouping in the reverse grouping the bombay uh, individual will harboring an special uh, antibody which is anti h i told you ki h uh, substance which um, uh, i was telling you if the h antigen is absent then the then the patient or individual will form an anti h because the antigen is absent he will form anti h and for Uh, a compatible uh, match he uh, you should match a uh, anti h with the h deficient get my point so in reverse grouping you will get the reaction with the a cell b cell o cell why because all the a cell b cell o cell will be formed on the h precursors on the h antigens and you will find a compatible unit only when the you are uh, not harboring an h antigen that is you are bombay group so the bombay group will have a compatible match only with the bombay group no one other else so uh, in the bombay group we have three type of categories so category 1 is the rbc which is h deficient and is non secretor which is pure bombay phenotype that is it is small h small h and is small e uh, sc sc so uh, bombay phenotype is non secretor and h completely deficient so basically the h gene is very common and is 99.99% uh, cases it is present and is only uh, sometime it is uh, deficient but it is more common in our population like in maharashtra in bombay from where it has been derived the name is bombay phenotype so conversely the h allele is very rare and does not produce the fucosyl transferase which is necessary for the formation of the h structure the bombay phenotype or the oh in heritates the hh ge- ge- genotype and therefore lacks the normal expression of the abh and antigens you may be harboring a and b genes you may be having uh, but the product of that genes through the enzymes is uh, the antigens you because this substance is as substance is lacking and on that as subs- on that as substance a and b um antigens will be lacked but if you are doing the molecular grouping of that individual you may say yeah it is bombay a positive bombay a group bombay b group second category is rbc which are h partially deficient and are non secretor so this type of rbcs of this individuals express the weaker form of the a and b if you are having a complete deficient h a and b will never be found but if some h is present a weaker form of a and b can be present you may not have a 4 plus reaction but you may have a 1 plus or 2 plus grade of reaction which are primarily detected by the adsorption and elution adsorption is you are adsorbing the sera on the known cells and then you are eluting it eluting it that you are removing the antibody from that antigen by a special method if a person is genetically a or b the respective enzymes can be detected but no h en- enzyme is detected even though it has been shown that there is a limited production of h antigen on the rbcs see 
कि देर इज नो एच एंजाइम बट देर इज सम काइंड ऑफ देर इज सम अमाउंट ऑफ एस सब्सटेंस प्रेजेंट ऑन विच ए एंड बी जीन्स आर एक्टिंग अपॉन सो डेट फिनोटाइप विल बी डिपिटेड एज ए स्मॉल एच फॉर द ए ग्रुप फॉर द बी ग्रुप इट कैन बी बी एच रेस्पेक्टिवली इन रेज इफ द इंडिविजुअल इज है ब्लड ग्रुप देन प्लस एच डिफिशियंट फिनोटाइप देन इट विल बी लिबर्ड एज ए बी H individuals, no H A or B individuals is present in the saliva. Why? Because uh, the individual is a non-secretor, is not harboring the S E G. The serum of A H individuals will contain N T B and no N T A, same as uh, we have talked about previously. Although N T A one is usually present. So what is N T A? N T A Uh, and sorry, N T A one. What is N T A one? I have already told you that A is the is a is just like an umbrella. It has many antigens A, B. So basically, A one and A two differs on the H antigen. So uh, H uh, A antigen has A type one, type two, type three, type four. Uh, all four type of substances present. But A two may present only uh, type one and type two. It may be lacking with the type four and type three. so it is about the if you are lacking an small amount of antigens you the body will sensitize that you are not harboring that antigen and it will form a antibody so an ah individual do will not form a nta nta is nta1 plus nta2 plus nta3 and all the antibodies but nta1 is only directed against a1 and, and antigen same is same case is with the bh serum ki nta is always present and anti b may be detected anti b will be directed only against b not against bh so in it is postulated that the homologous inheritance of mutant h of fut1 gene codes for the production of low levels of s transferase activity the small amount of s substance on the rbc is completely used by the a antigen or b transferase enzymes this is as in the small quantity of b or a antigen present on red cells with a no detectable and h and uh, h antigen if uh, in normal uh, in normal circumstances if you are typing a antigen theek hai so you will give the so you can have the reaction with anti a and anti h anti serum but if you are having a partially h deficient uh, individual he can give the reaction with uh, weaker reaction with the nta but the nta uh, but no reaction with the nth why because the oh, all the h antigen has been used in the formation of a or b corresponding antigen but he may have an antibody against that which may be again stronger or it can be weaker which is known as the nth which is igm type with a wide thermal range so again this is uh, just a pictorial diagram in which uh, uh, i have classified the uh, uh, h deficient into three types uh, the red cell with the h deficient together with the non secretory status which is the bombay type it is second class category is the h partially deficient and is non secretor uh, in which we can have ab antigen in the weaker form such anti h uh, and anti together with the um, h anti h uh, antibody but h antigen may be totally absent then third is the you are having a weak uh, weak um, uh, or some kind of or, or some amount of h antigen or partially h deficient together with the secretory status so because of secretions present the rbc membrane will absorb the antigens from the plasma so you can have h antigen you can have b antigen you can have a antigen the difference between the category 2 and category 3 is is, is the non secretory and secretory status in the category 2 the individual is non secretory and in category 3 the individual is secretory and because of that secretory status h antigen is present and in second category the h antigen is absent uh, same i have told in the slide so in nutshell so in addition to being expressed on the red cells ab antigens are also expressed on more, most uh, most other tissues as glycoproteins and glycolipids soluble blood group substances of same abo group as the red cells may be found in the serum or in the plasma or it may be detectable in the saliva except csn the secretory status is controlled by the sc gene by the fut gene 
most commonly uh, known as and uh, it is present on the chromosome number 19 the c gene is the is the dominant uh, gene which is responsible for the secretory status approximately 80% of the general population are secretory there is no sc uh, no allele therefore no sc because sc is the dominant gene basically so as there is no sc product in the absence of sc gene that individual will be known as the as the non secretor and these population uh, form a 20% of the total population amount so the unique features of abo and h system are that it is critically unique feature of abo and h blood group system that unlike uh, other blood group system the nt and ntb uh, and antibodies are invariably present or they are uh, naturally occurring and as the abo h antigens are widely distributed throughout the body the abo blood group must be considered for the organ transplantation and some organs like the heart must have ebu compatible with the recipient in fact all the uh, transplantation ideally should be ebu compatible but there are exceptions because of the uh, unavailability of the donor we may cut down the tetra through the plasma exchange and we may do the transplant like we are doing the renal transplant in the bone marrow transplantation ebu incompatibility is accepted because of the lack of the expression of the ebu on the stem cells but precautions must be needed such as the removal of the unwanted donor red cells or the plasma during the transfusion or during the harvesting of these proteins thank you so much thank you thank you dr anubhav sorry for uh, hurrying you up for the last few slides uh, actually it was a very nice presentation and uh, very detailed out i mean this is something we really need to understand i think we all need to go back to this presentation and see it again and again to understand this in much better form yes sir yeah thank you so much dr anubhav i'll get back to you with the rest of the presentation and we will coordinate and do it accordingly thank you sir thank you sir take care bye good night bye sir thank you sir